uh, thank you for kind introduction. And uh, I would like to extend my thanks to MICS group for inviting me to give me a talk at this platform. As you say that, as you see that my topic is green chemistry innovation in the synthesis of medicine. I would like to talk about number of you know uh, projects and they are uh, they are related to different types of chemistry because in industry you cannot monetize your research because you you, you are going to have a number of medicines to work on we'll see uh, we'll talk about a little bit green chemistry and then uh, some synthetic aspect of some of the apis which is nothing which is nothing apart from medicines so if you if you really want to uh, get into the green chemistry philosophy that we have at dr reddy's there is a website we can always find here and uh, there are certain things that we reported in nature medicine in 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 what way we can find out the right chemistry what could be the approaches and all and before we get into the synthetic aspect of chemistry i would like to reiterate the significance of chemistry in our life so whatever you see whatever you deal with everywhere there is a uh, you know useful chemicals and there are some harmful chemicals also for example you know green tea uh, whenever you take you always remember you are taking more than 200 chem 200 chemicals coffee more than 1000 chemicals cigarettes mo more than 7000 chemicals out of 7000 almost like 90% of those uh, chemical entities are toxic and if you see the evolution of chemistry you know uh, it is in in the context of green chemistry why we should do green chemistry now you know the green chemistry got evolved from kitchens you know when we start putting a lot of steps to make food and uh, uh, we learned a little bit from there and then we started learning how any medicine works in our system that's where the ligand receptor theory came in the picture and over the period of time there is a great demand of you know chemicals not only in the pharmaceutical sector but all across the energy uh, industry sectors and uh, what happens our earth starts becoming stressed because we are taking natural resources and you know uh, trying to make use of them and most of the things are getting wasted so that's where the green chemistry comes in the picture you know the green chemistry is uh, the significance of green chemistry is said well said by nobel laureate linus pauling but in my opinion green chemistry or chemistry itself itself signifies love and hate relationship you know it can't live without it but can't accept everything that it has you know it has got you know positive side it has got negative side i would say negative side provides you the opportunity to work on and take advantage of it if you if you see you know when when you were in the pharmaceutical sector and uh, looking at the structure of the medicines that we had you know 30 20 30 years back the degree of complexity was not that great but now due to the resistance of those medicine uh in terms of uh, pathogens are quite high that's the reason we need to come up with the more complicated structures to have new medicines and all so looking at these two structures which is halicondrin and uh, irubilin th this is this is kind of you know uh, bio inspired entity which is quite effective against cancer to so look at this this part is quite you know similar here and this part is not very essential i would say these are not the pharmacophoric components the professor kisi from harvard he came up with this uh, synthetic version of halocondrin derivative which is irubilin it's quite effective and the dose is roughly 0.5 mg so in order to deal with this this complexity we need to get involved in the innovation at the first place being an organic chemist you know uh, uh i would like to mention here it plays pivotal role in terms of uh, doing a lot of things in pharma industry for example controlling the cost developing safe processes having consistent quality speed of the development if you understand the chemistry well and help your engineering colleagues to address the engineering challenges and try to have a consistent consistent polymorphic form control the impurities 
select the proper solvent have intellectual property you know advantage and not but uh, uh, last but not the least you, you can develop your processes quite green and how it is possible if you are you know well versed and uh, keeping in touch with the recent trend is trend in organocatalysis organometallics and biocatalysis so these are the things that organic chemistry provides to to do good job at the workplace so how to approach towards you know excellent synthesis or processes the we we, we should uh, consider the green chemistry like 12 principle green matrices in the design phase and try to minimize the number of steps and try to minimize or replace non green solvents and work through multidisciplinary scientific interface which is nothing but collaboration try to start your synthesis by using renewable uh, material based uh, renewable materials and if you are not able to avoid the waste you should have clear cut strategy how to minimize the waste or how to avoid it or how to you know manage it uh, efficiently and uh, try to have non toxic and hazard free practices and try to develop continuous mode of chemistry over batch mode of chemistry and you know if you have to if you do if you don't have any choice in term uh, and you have to use catalytic ba catalyst based transformation try to use non expensive metals like iron zinc copper and all those and if you are going to use enzymes you should try to immobilize so that you know Uh, you can do your reaction at very low dilutions and uh, educate the young generation so that they can take lead in this field so they should uh, the, the education should be in such a way that they should come out with the solution of of the problems rather than having knowledge and which is not being used properly so as i said one has to move from batch to continuous one has to have biocatalysis catalytic processes and i started my career in late 2006 and looking at the number of apis and trying to come out what would be the alternate synthetic routes and can we minimize the number of steps can we greenify those synthesis and we could do you know lot of stuff in last 8 years you know we come up with the so many alternative synthesis for the apis and published and patented number of papers So we have we will go through couple of you know case studies but before we get into that in industry innovation can be at any stage or of any magnitude there could be incremental innovation medium size process related technology based and major uh, innovations and they always create big impact so that's a, a that's a uh, ball game strategy here. for example we all know the you know reductive amination right it's not great chemistry but when you try to do reductive amination at the scale and take sodium borohydride aldehyde and amine they don't work efficiently they take sometime more than 24 hours if you don't control the moisture moisture exposure limit is going to be pretty high that's where we we try to understand can we have direct strategy for reductive amination what we did here we took the aldehyde and amine in presence of lewis acid which is iron triflate and one can ask why did you use iron triflate because iron and zinc they come in class 3 which is non toxic whereas other metals they come in class 1 and class 2 so these metals are uh, pretty difficult to you know so absence of uh, these in the final product that's the reason we don't recommend to use unless and until it is required we, we should not recommend to use these metals we can stick around with the uh, iron and zinc so we we use iron triflate and reaction was found to complete in very short period of time with uh, with high yield and purity look at the generality of method one mole percent of iron triflate one equivalent of sodium borohydride in yield are, yields are there in the order of 90s and it has been applied in one of the api synthesis at large scale like sinacalcet second incremental innovation 
when you try to do acylation, right? It's age-old chemistry. Everybody uses DMAP and pyridine, and reaction takes like some time, you know, six hours, ten hours. The timing is not the problem. Problem is how to deal with pyridine at the scale. So we had a lot of, you know, fallback issues from the plant. Uh, then we started thinking, can we do this acylation by using some sort of, you know, strategy which is catalytic, and it should happen uh, uh, in a short span of time. So what we did here, we used zinc triflate at room temperature. So we found out it is quite efficient, and uh, it is quite general, not only in the case of uh, primary alcohols, but in the phenols, thiophenols, and, and uh, some uh, uh, congested or sterically hindered uh, secondary alcohols and this edmentanol is quite hard to do acylation on that, but it works quite effectively in this case. Look at the comparison, if you, if you use DMAP, pyridine and acetic, hard, acetic anhydride, it takes 2 hours, but if you use our method, it takes almost a minute, that is it and yield is quite comparable. In some of the cases, yield is even better than that. And the third incremental uh, amidation is reduction of amide by using LAH and TMS chloride. If you, if you uh, go through the literature, you see number of Lewis acid apart from TMS chloride. And those Lewis acids which has been used in combination with reducing agent, if there is a chiral center next to the carbonyl of the amide, they tend to resmize. This method is relatively much better because you don't see resmization. Your di your stereo MERS or your uh, stereochemistry is quite you know intact once you finish your reaction. So this is the very simple mechanism, and look at the you know uh, generality of the method. So what we did cleverly. We, we use resmic, sorry, uh, achiral materials, resmic materials where there is amide, but these chiral centers are resmic. And we understand the reaction profile. It, they are corresponding chiral amides we subjected to the re, uh, reduction. And see, your DE or EE are in uh, almost intact. There is no compromise on stereochemistry. That is how we found the found that this reaction system, this reagent system is quite efficient and we can take it forward even to reduce uh, chiralamides. These are a dashboard from TL if you have more than 500 hits in a month you will get this certificate. And there is pretty good chemistry that we have done, 1, 4 addition, asymmetric 1, 4 addition and this was not reported. And uh, we thought it's going to be pretty simple, but it's not that simple because there is a solvent that plays a role. There is an incoming group which is part of Brignard reagent plays a role in, in uh, getting high in NC selectivity. What we did, we first uh, actually our objective was to find different synthesis of naproxen. And we did find, but only the problem is this particular aldehyde is pretty expensive. So, uh, if if we if we can make this aldehyde in like two dollars or three dollars, we can beat the existing synthesis of naproxen. And we we tried to uh, do in two ways, like take aldehyde and condense it with uh, natromethane and uh, add methyl grignard in one four fashion and get the naproxen, or uh, take the uh, the the six methoxy bromonaphthalene and make Grignard out of it, add on to the natto olefin, but you know handling this natto, uh, natto olefin is pretty difficult, this explosive. That is in this part is abundant, but this is pretty neat synthesis provided we should get in cheaper price. Having said that, we, we, uh, we, we try to look into the one asymmetric 1,4 one addition. I, at the first place, we had different set of uh, catalyst out of uh, copper thiol carboxylate and uh, C2 symmetric uh, ligand like bisoxazelin and we have got this uh, BINAP and Josephos. So we, we ran kind of a uh, screening uh, experiments. We did not see you know high degree of selectivity. We have got almost resmic uh, products. We started looking at the literature. 
So there, there is some literature talk about you know using bulkier solvent. So the, we introduced MTBE. So we we could see there is a little improvement in the stereoselectivity, inensive selectivity. So uh, this this factor is set. Then we started looking at can we increase the size of incoming group, which is a part of Grignard. Over the period of time, what we found out, if we have varieties of Grignard reagent having different size of uh, uh, groups, that might give you better selectivity. In fact, we, we realized that if you increase the size of incoming group, you get excellent stereoselectivity. And, uh, and you know, this uh, Josephus was the quite effectively again in this case. So we proposed the catalytic cycle transition state, and this this found uh, this was kind of you know a new chemistry that we developed at our place, and it has got potential to apply in so many uh, other APIs if one has to do one for addition in a symmetric fashion. So we have <coughs> synthesized number of derivatives of naproxen, where not only methyl but also butyl isopropyl. We are trying to test whether they are more effective than naproxen or not. And then <coughs> this is Davis reagent, but you know this uh, trichloromethyl methyl imidate was not extensively explored. And we were surprised. Then what we, we did, we wanted to have regioselective methylation by using a reported procedures and that involves Mirvine reagent which is very difficult to handle. You cannot make it because you have to use dimethyl ether and you know you need to you know simply pump into the reactor at lower temperature and try to make it. It is very difficult. So, we, we came out with this reagent and we understand that N1 methylation is thermodynamically controlled and 2 methylation is kinetically controlled. And uh, this is uh, and this immediate the reagent is quite effective in, in terms of giving N2 products selectively. That's, it. That's how we, we, we have taken this chemistry and scaled it up and understood the generality of this method and, is found, uh, and we found out this reagent is suitable to both, to both the substrate which has got electron withdrawing group and electron donating group. Whereas the Mirvine reagent, they work only if you have electron withdrawing group and it was difficult to uh, do, but in this case we could scale it up. Second thing is process innovation. Look at the innovators chemistry, it is very interesting you know, you, you can use the, the, the pKa of this proton is in the order of 25 or something. You need to use butyl lithium to pull this out and add it to the ketone, that is how we do a doll reaction and then uh, you can uh, dehalogenate this chloro which is there in the aromatic system and the funny part is if you do not have chloro this reaction does not work. This is a prerequisite for this aldol reaction in this substrate. We, we use Rani, uh, they use Rani nickel and in, in some of the reports they use uh, palladium and then resolution and so on and so forth. If you, then what we thought there is another chemistry which was not fully developed, we, we tried to look at different set of reagents, volume of the solvents and trying to improvise the diastereoselectivity. So we, we, we thought let us let's do reformisky type of reaction, however it is not classical reformisky because you need alpha bromo ethyl acetate to make the reformisky reagent. But if you look at this system, this is the surrogate of ester. Right? If you if you look at the this pyrimidine ring, it is a surrogate of ester. So we, we take advantage of that. So what we did, we made Prefamasky reagent, understood the chemistry, and there is a possibility of Zimmerman uh, Traxler's Traxler system that might give you stereo diastereoselectivity. So we tested this concept on our substrate, and we also understand what is the half life of Prefamasky reagent, whether we make it and then add the ketone substrate or we can add everything then add the bromo compound. So, that the moment there is a reformisky reagent form it should be uh, used with the ketone substrate right away to avoid the formation of other impurities. So what we did we adapted this chemistry 
and look at the stereoselectivity. In the case of butyl lithium, this chemistry where you need to deprotonate this uh, position and do aldol chemistry, the diastereoselectivity is almost 1 to 1. But in the case of a famous key, you get 8, 8, 8 to 12. So, what would be my uh, maximum yield possible? 44 percent. And here, not more than 20, 26, 27 percent. That is how we make difference. So, we, we have like 12 to 15 percent yield improvement by doing this chemistry and uh, I am happy to say that this is the first time the uh, Rifamaski type of chemistry is being scaled up at like 500 kg otherwise there is no process you can go and see in the literature. And then we focus on other attributes of the process like zinc quantity, activation of zinc, choice of Lewis acid, substrate addition profile, reaction temperatures and all. So, there is one f uh, a great finding that we 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 had here when we were using different grades of zinc, so we were not able to get high conversion. So what happens? Uh, we try to look at what is the composition of zinc. What are the other stuff present along with the zinc? So we we realize it is contaminated with lead, and if you have got lower percentage of lead in the zinc, reaction does not proceed to the completion. So why it is so? because less uh, lead has you know less oxidation potential and normally zinc has the layer of zinc oxide or zinc hydroxide on the surface that is how oxidative insertion is not that efficient. And what lead does lead gets oxidized and zinc 2 gets reduced to zinc 0 that is how you can activate the zinc surface and make your oxidative insertion quite effective. So, what we did we deliberately added known quantity of lead irrespective of the zinc source and have process consistency, consistency in terms of doing this CC bond formation. The lead plays role so, that is that is pretty uh, uh, good to know. And then we also look at the role of Lewis acid and we had a uh, number of Lewis acids reported. But you know being a process being a part of process industry you cannot rely on the expensive Lewis acids. So, we wanted to literally replace iodine with some of the cheaper Lewis acids. We found out TMS chloride works perfectly well. So, we did it and we also telescoped the process eventually what we got. Look at the process which is filed by the innovator that cost 4000 dollar and our internal target was 1800 and we did all sorts of things and we hit the uh, uh, cost 1400 against the target 1800. So, that is how you make money out of doing chemistry innovation, process innovation right and we understood what is the contribution of different components in your synthesis. There is another uh, process innovation which is on uh, citalopram. So, by looking at this chemistry you can see it uh, looks very straightforward, but I can see if you start questioning each and every step we realize you can further improvise and make it much better that is what we did. For example, we are started asking question can we uh, freshly prepare Grignard reagent and use it in situ can we avoid the use of LAH can we avoid copper cyanide can we avoid sodium hydride can we do most of the transformation at room temperature is it possible to telescope the process etcetera. So, we, we had a template that is how your template looks like right. So, we attempted it and we understand the effect of moisture content in the solvent system and all. We also look at the temperature profile and we, we did DOE design of experiment and we realized that if you do everything the way we thought you can improvise the process by making in situ Grignard just like from 11 to 4. 13 oh sorry 9 to 13 and make entire sequence in one pot at a time right and make it perfect and look at the you know overall yield it is it was 15 percent so we got 44 and e factor was in the order of 200 so we brought it down to 53 it is like you know understanding the process and we also look at the workup procedure normally do not we do not care about workup right, but we also look at the workup because we use lot of solvents and water in that. So, we simplified the workup and we make the process quite uh, 
green and we also make uh, process safe by doing RC1 studies which is nothing but what is the temperature, uh, what, is, what is the energy, what is enthalpy increase if, if there is a 1 degree temperature rise right that determines your safety parameters during a scale up. And you know one of my colleagues he we published in OPRD he found out this paper is outstanding because we combined two Grignards in one pond. That's, that was elegant feature. We also did this biocatalytic biocatalysis with a keto reduction. But the, the good part, you know, since we are uh, working in pharma industry, again, we cannot use expensive material. So what we did here, whenever you do biocatalysis, you need feed, you need glucose. That should be oxidized so that your NADPH plus can be reduced to NADPH. That's how we do reduction. To be bought like you know sugarcane based as in like two rupees per kg from sugarcane industry, and we we took this whole cell. We did not isolate the enzyme, and did this reaction at very low concentration. You know, we we studied the conversion versus enzyme selectivity, the substrate concentration, effect of cell concentration, and we found out. If the concentration of cell is like 150 gram per liter and solvent is like in, uh, in the ratio of uh, 2 liter and 0.5, yeah, 1 to 1 water and hexane and glucose 0.5 gram which is back integrated with the content of glucose in the waste material of the sugarcane industry and re reaction happened to be quite good in 48 hours at almost room temperature with 85 percent isolated yield with 98 percent yield. This is very effective. And then we had a technology based innovation. To look at this pretty complicated structure, right? This is the upper part, head part, core part, and tail part. This core part is very tough to uh, fix these three stereochemistries. Look at the known approach, where one of the green chemistry principles you should not start with the protected starting material, or you should do protection, deprotection synthesis, right? Uh, protection and deprotection free synthesis. So we wanted to start with naked amino acid and do the synthesis to access this uh, core part. So we had a different strategy. Can we start with amino acid and do natural aldol chemistry? So we we had we synthesized the aldehyde. We have a we have a got we have got a natural derivative, and we have two catalyst system. One is C2 symmetric copper acetate. Other one is, you know, uh, this, uh, this is lithium lanthanum bimetallic Sivasaki's catalyst. So this is difficult to manipulate in the uh, scale, but this one is quite easy. Reaction is at room temperature. So when we did this reaction, this is not excellent, but this is the right guy. If you see this and this, the yield is quite good, and you get roughly 40 40 percent SA, and here you get also roughly 40 percent assay, but the process simplicity is quite good here in this case. That is what we, we uh, took this chemistry forward. We synthesize aldehyde not with uh, by using protected amino acid, we could make this aldehyde and did this uh, natural aldol reaction in one pot. We were so lucky because we are dealing with diastereomers, not the enantiomers, right. The diastereomers are intended to get crystallized when you make salts. So when we throw the succinic acid, we got 40 percent yield with you know uh, 98 percent chemical as well as diastereomeric purity. The, the, the elegance part is you know process telescope and whatever assay was there got translated to the product yield. So we, we further impro improvised the chemistry by changing the uh, by oxidizing at this place, did acylation, and this 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 provided us the opportunity for dynamic kinetic reductions. So you can do you know metal catalyzed uh, DKR or enzyme catalyzed DKR. That's what we did here. We used some metal catalyzed DKR. We didn't get good uh, selectivity in yield, but when we have recombinant enzymes, we got 93 to 7 and 00, and we got 80 percent yield. This pretty, you know, excellent result that we got. So we have continuous chemistry, and you know, uh, 
So I, I cannot explain because we are running out of time, but I can tell you what is advantage. See a batch process, it takes 2.5 hours, but continuous process take one second. These are three continuous batches. The top three entries are batch and bottom three entries are continuous and see there is a five to six percent yield improvement. So there is another chemistry that we, we did it on Januvia. We we talked we, we heard a couple of lectures from Merck. Look at the process that Merck has developed for it elegant. We still we wanted to thrive on and come up with a different process. And that should give us cost advantage. The, in, in all the processes that Merck has developed, this one, the Green Chemistry Award, but they themselves neg uh, negated it because there is a use of rhodium and they were not able to, you know, uh, control in terms of bleaching and other stuff. And Josephus is pretty expensive, 10 mole percent, right? And they get 99 to 1, dealing 99 to 1 in enzymeric product is much difficult than dealing 99 to 1 diastereomeric product. So we wanted to make diastero, we wanted to have diastereomeric approach. So what we did? You can put chiral auxiliary here, right? And use sodium borate and methane sulfonic acid. And understand the you know classical chemistry in what way you can deliver the hydride in a stereoselective fashion. So we we tested this reaction in first in one shot. We got 83 to 17, and this and this was also uh, quite good. You know this this substrate can be crystallized by leaving behind one percent of the right guy. Otherwise, you can get 82 percent yield. There is nothing which is going to go based. And over the period of time, we optimize the process, and we, we are getting 93 to 7, and yield is 90 percent. If you if you see the rhodium cord chemistry that Merck has developed, the RMC is 7,000 dollar, and our RMC is 700 dollar. But I do not have any details of cost of the enzymatic process that Merck is working on at this moment. But uh, uh, at this moment, I think we have got the best process to target number of markets. There is another chemistry that we developed, which is directly li uh, linked to the origin of life. You know, we all talk about carbon dioxide gets converted to amino acid, hydrogen cyanide gets converted to amino acid. But what is the exact mechanism? Nobody knows, right? But carbon dioxide can go to the glycolic acid that can lead to the formation of amino, amino acid. So we were working on some, some other project, but we, we got some trainee, some PhD students working. And we, we try to understand the Kanijaro reaction, right? And Kanijaro reaction is nothing but take two moles of benzaldehyde in the presence of base, one gets reduced, other gets oxidized. If you take glaxaldehyde and ammonia, then one mole of Imine, which is going to form, gets oxidized, other uh, reduced, and other gets oxidized. This is quite equivalent to Kanijaro. To be termed as Aja Kanijaro reaction, which is not reported in the literature. The elegant part is once you make this, normally if you have got imine hydroxy compound, you need metal catalyst to reduce it. But this is auto reduction system. And what happens here? This gets oxidized, this gets reduced. That's how you get the glycine. This has got potential to synthesize amino acids and have a correlation factor with the origin of life. So we did energy calculation. So normally, we had keto in all system that is quite well known for such kind of things, but this mechanism is not uh, right because there are number of energy barriers, whereas this has less energy barriers and we calculated DFT calculation. We did a DFT calculation and found out that is how the path V is uh, quite uh, convincing and it is under revision in ChemCom. Iruvillin we are also working on, but I cannot tell you this story, we do not have time. So the, uh, so we got Green Chemistry Award, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we can take one question, that is about all we can take at this time. So uh, I noticed you're, you mentioned that uh, about the Shibasaki catalyst and yeah. the operational problems using that catalyst. Yeah. 
I, re I recently was part of a project where we uh, published an operationally simple version of Shibasaki's catalyst that you can make in situ from really cheap precursors. So uh, I think that there's a lot of uh, opportunity there to use the, uh, that system uh, in new ways using this uh, operationally simple precatalyst. We can talk about it if you're interested. To use lanthanum chloride or something? We'll talk about this. Yeah.